Welcome to Stone Cottage Adventures. Today's video is one my daughters have been looking forward to, a breakdown of regional French designs. I promised this video about five months ago and am just now getting around to it, so I apologize. France is a large country, especially by European standards. The history, terrain, and climate are extremely varied. And those variations have resulted in different types of construction, use of different materials, and a wide variety of styles. But because they are French, style just comes naturally. People's opinions about the French might vary, but you cannot argue with the fact that France is the preeminent source of style and has been for centuries. I have put a link down in the description to a video I did about the history of French decor. It was entitled French Interior Design Styles Made Easy. It includes stuff like Louis XIV, 15th, 16th, Napoleonic, Empire, Art Nouveau, those kinds of things, describing the styles. If you want more detail than I'm giving you today, that's where you go. It's one of my personal favorite videos, a passion of mine. But today, I'm looking at the regional styles in France and how that shows up in their homes and ours. So everyone recognizes this famous room in the Palace of Versailles, the Hall of Mirrors. You might also recognize the ornate Baroque and Rococo decor. Rococo is the lighter French spin on earlier Italian Baroque style and is often considered the pinnacle of French interior design. The organic curves found in the moldings and the furniture seen here are a signature French look found in homes throughout France and the rest of the world. The ubiquitous cabriole leg is probably somewhere in your home. I sure have them in mine. Other decor features found in this ornate style include crystal chandeliers, elaborate parquet wood floors, beautiful porcelains, trumeau mirrors, bed crowns, Aubusson rugs and tapestries, silk damasks and brocades, objects that have become timeless. By the time Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette took over at Versailles, the neoclassical style was the new trend. And if there's anything Marie Antoinette wanted to be, it was on trend. It's easy to recognize which rooms she had redecorated. The straight lines were influenced by the Roman styles popularized by the discovery of Pompeii. In America, we call this style Federalist, and the British call it Regency. Whole other history lesson. Again, this style is very common. My great aunt loved it, so I have my share. Another distinctively French look is the Hausmann Apartments in Paris. They were built in the mid-1800s, giving Paris the famous style we are all familiar with. The stone buildings with mansard roofs and wrought iron railings, and the beautiful interiors with classic paneling, French windows, trim, and parquet floors. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's dreamed of living in one of these spaces that are obviously influenced by the styles found in Versailles. So when we see those two styles, Rococo and Neoclassical, we can easily recognize French interior design influence. So what else is French? Is it just about the French court in the 17 and 1800s? Nope. It started long before then and went on long after. And out in the countryside, styles did not change as rapidly. Let's take a minute to look at some typical 
French towns. This is a town in the Alsace-Lorraine region, an area that borders Germany and Switzerland. The charming half-timber buildings were common in the Middle Ages up until the mid-1600s. They were also common in Normandy, the part of France that's just across the channel from England. If you think this village in Normandy looks English, it's really the other way around. English villages look Norman. Thank you, William the Conqueror. In the region known as Provence, Buildings were made from stone, which was easier to get than wood in that region, so we find charming stone villages and farmhouses. Red tile roofs are a common feature even today. One of the most distinctive sights along the Riviera coast, which is part of Provence, is the contrast of the white stone buildings with the red tile roofs and the deep blue of the Mediterranean Sea along the area known as the Azure Coast. These villages are similar to Italian and Spanish styles because that's what they're close to. And further inland, the fields of lavender are distinctively beautiful. And villages in the French Alps look like those found in the Swiss and Austrian Alps. The people in those areas don't waste time on the latest styles. They are very pragmatic people. I do think it's very interesting to note how regional differences are so evident when you look at the villages from one end of France to the other. The furniture traditionally found in these rural villages and buildings tended to be very boxy and heavy, designed for function, not comfort or the ornate beauty found in the homes of the nobility. Maybe it was because they didn't have closets or plastic storage bins. Hence, we don't really see reproductions of that earliest furniture. And as time progressed, what we began to see was a little more rustic take on the classic styles found in the palace. But what we do see is the construction materials used in the houses, like flooring. In the northern areas, like Normandy and Alsace, stone floors were common on the ground floor of the buildings. In the southern areas, terracotta tiles were and still are common. On upper floors, of course, wood was used. Huge exposed beams held up the ceilings and stone fireplaces large enough to walk into were necessary for cooking and heating. Large windows that could be opened in warm regions and smaller ones in cool areas, all covered with functional shutters. In an average home or even an average chateau, most paint was either white chalky paint or a muddy grayish green created by mixing whatever was on hand. Blue and that rich true green were unavailable until the 19th century. If you take the time to study regional French houses, you will see some colors used over and over, like the grays in Paris, the blue shutters in Provence, the reds of Normandy, the oranges and greens of Luberon, all very distinctive looks. Most of these rural and village homes had very practical occupants who did not replace their furnishings just because they were not on trend. And they often acquired used furniture from more affluent neighbors, probably an employer. So something interesting began to happen during the Industrial Age. That was during the 1800s when a rising middle class was building larger homes in the countryside, copying the historic chateaus, or what the historic, they thought the historic chateaus should look like, and neo-Gothic styles. The trendy flooring of that period was the decorative concrete in caustic tiles that have recently become popular again. Also, 
industrialization was making new furniture more affordable. Looking back to previous styles, they had machine-made reproductions of Rococo and Neoclassical, which was then joined by Neo-Gothic, and what we might refer to as Victorian furniture. And their less trendy neighbors were recycling the old-fashioned, handmade Rococo and Neoclassical furniture. So many fine, handmade pieces of furniture ended up out in the countryside. Are you, you wishing you could try and travel back to a yard sale in the mid-1800s? At the beginning of the 1900s, Art Nouveau, a new take on Rococo, and then Art Deco were added to the mix. Although most furniture after the 1850s was mass-produced, there will always be quality pieces for those with a discerning eye. Now, the last element we need to address is fabrics. The most ornate fabrics are the silk, damasks, brocades, velvets, and tapestries, historically only available to the nobility and wealthy clergy. The average person prior to the industrial age had simple wooden furniture and wooden shutters. Decorating with fabric was for the wealthy. Common people usually wore wool with some linen next to their skin. Bedding and table linens were expensive luxuries for the average young woman who carefully collected so she would be ready for marriage. And then cotton fabrics began to be imported from India in the mid-1600s. But there were complaints from the wool and silk producers who didn't want their business taken offshore. And there were problems creating color-fast dyes. So it really wasn't until the mid-1700s that beautiful cotton fabrics really became a thing. When someone discovered, no, they borrowed the chemical process for how to fix the colors so they wouldn't fade when washed. Now, in the south of France, the block printed patterns were heavily influenced by designs from India. But handmade block printed fabrics were still expensive enough that most people who got their hands on some pretty fabric decorated their bodies, not their homes. Now there are three things you need to remember about the early cotton fabrics. The first is how expensive the printed fabrics were once they solved the color fast issue. The handheld blocks used to dye the fabrics were about the size of a large book. Stamping fabric was a very labor intensive project. So women commonly used elaborate stitching to create interest and texture on the plain white fabrics. Young women, like I said, embroidered elaborate table and bed linens for their trousseaus. Additionally, they were quilting to make warm, affordable bed coverings. And of course, the expensive pattern fabrics were used for beautiful regional costumes catch the eye of potential suitors. Many of these traditional designs are still produced in the south of France by a company called Suleado. In the late 1960s, the fabrics became very popular for the less structured clothing that people began to wear at that time. And it didn't take long for those colorful fabrics to be imported to America by a little New York City shop called Pierre Deux that specialized in French interior design and antiques. That's how I first became aware of them. I am looking at some of these beautiful fabrics from the south of France to redo the little bedroom upstairs. Very hard decision. At the time this was going on in the south of France, in a little town near Paris called Jouy, a new style of printed fabric was developed. Now, the French word for fabric is toile. 
So this toile from Jouy, or toile de Jouy, is readily recognizable for its pastoral scenes with limited color palette. This new style of cotton fabric rapidly became popular with the court of Louis XVI. The women at court had peasant dresses made from it. Like, that's really how the peasants dressed. And they decorated their private rooms with it. The fabric manufacturer there in Jouy cleverly changed the patterns during the French Revolution and managed to stay in business when other artisans who supplied the court were either fleeing the country or losing their heads. And Toile de Jouy has never been out of style. In kindergarten, my favorite dress was a red Toile de Jouy with a beautiful red velvet belt. The little built-in skirt was itchy, but I still loved it. That was the beginning of my passion for Toile. So we typically see four distinctive types of fabric in French interiors. First, those ornate silks, the brocades, damasks, and velvets. Second, neutral cottons and linens with hand stitching often added. Third, cotton fabrics with brightly colored dyes heavily influenced by Indian designs common in the south of France. And fourth, toile de jouy with its pastoral and classical scenes. Now, I'm going to stop right now and have you picture a room with a French country look. Is this what you're picturing? White fabrics on all the upholstery and drapes, maybe a little gray, the lighter lime-washed wood furniture, neutral flooring like sisal rugs, light wood floors or mirrors, tiles, crystal chandeliers. Now, I googled French country interiors, and the majority of what popped up was this look. And don't get me wrong, these rooms can be very beautiful, inviting, relaxing. I absolutely love some of them, but I do feel like it's modern farmhouse meets French country. All I'm saying is that French country is so much more than just this look. What you're seeing now is authentic French interiors where real French people in France live. Some are in Paris, some are in chateaus, some are in houses in the country or small towns and villages, some are in warm southern climates, others in cooler northern or mountainous regions. If you familiarize yourself with the building materials of France, stone, wood, terracotta tiles, the architectural touches, beams, plaster, arches, fridge style windows and doors, the lines of the furniture, rococo, neoclassical, art nouveau, art deco, the French fabrics, linens, velvets, brocades, toiles, and Indian influence prints, and the classic French touches like trumeau mirrors, chandeliers, quilts, beautiful porcelain and copper pots. You can identify French style when you come across it and then create your own uniquely French influence spaces. I'm also providing a link in the description to my video on chic French style in 20 simple steps. And I have a video on nine easy DIYs to add French style and another on French decor with a touch of whimsy. The more I know about French design, the more I realize how huge the French influence is on my style and so many spaces I see. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps YouTube to promote the video. And watch one of my other videos on French style. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.